Now, sometimes with the pigeonhole principle, not only do we want to prove something is true, but we have to do a bit more work to find out uh, what actually are the pigeons and the pigeonholes, right? Have a look at this example. We want to prove that if seven numbers are selected from 1 to 11, there will always be a pair which sums to 12. And before we even jump into the proof of um, this question here, sometimes it's good to just um, get an intuition of what's actually happening here. If you write out the numbers from 1 to 11, This is saying that if I select any seven of these numbers, I will always get a pair which sum exactly to 12. So let's see if that's actually true or not. So let's just select them at random, for example. Maybe 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Is there a pair of numbers here which sum exactly to 12? Yep, I can see it. 3 and 4. In fact, we have 2. We have 4 and 8 as well. But this is saying that there will always be a pair which sum to 12. Let's try another just random kind of allocation. Um, I don't know, start here maybe. So, and again, let's check. Do we have a pair that's under 12? Um, yep, we've got here 2 and 10. In fact, we have 3 and 9 as well. Now, <clears throat> when I'm thinking about proving something to be true, it's much harder to prove something to be true because I can give as many examples um, as I can here. I can keep going on and on and on. Um, but it's very difficult to show that there will always be a pair which sums 12. And the same for just things in general when we're talking about um, statements. Like, for example, if I didn't study for a mass test one time and I did really well, right? It'd be hard to argue that, oh, I can always um, not study for a test and still always do well. Right? You could keep doing these again and again and again. It would only take one example to disprove that. To prove something to be true, we have to use particular frameworks. And the pigeonhole principle is a great one. It can show that something is always true. In this case, we want to show that there will always be a pair which sums to 12. I think there's a bit of intuition, again, when I'm looking at this. I can see why this is actually happening, right? If you look at these half of the numbers, and you look at these numbers here, right, there's always a matching pair that seem to give me 12, right? 1 and 11, 2 and 10, and we go in each time, each time, each time. And six, well, six is kind of special because, you know, um, I can't choose a number which matches with that one to give me 12. That's just kind of by itself, right? So we'll park that there for a moment. But if you think about it, if you group these up into pairs, um, let's see how that would look. So if I group them into pairs which sums are 12, So here's my groups here. You notice something interesting, don't you? Right? You can see that if I try and think about the worst case scenario, where I try and avoid the situation where I choose numbers which sum to 12, I'd be choosing one from each of these groups first. Right? I'd maybe pick 1, then maybe 10, 3, 8, and 7, and 6. I can choose 6 numbers. but if I'm choosing seven numbers, once I've cho chosen these six here, if I'm trying to avoid this, it doesn't matter which one I choose next, right? I will always have to have um, at least a two of these numbers being selected, right? I'm, I'm, I always have to select a pair of these here. And, and that's the kind of intuition I'm thinking about. Sometimes I have to uh, maybe manipulate these a little bit so I can create uh, pigeonholes which make this condition true. So how can I express this answer? Well. So we're creating the pigeonholes. We let the pigeonholes be the pairs of numbers defined up here. And now I'm stating um, <clears throat> why choosing six numbers is not enough. Because it's possible by choosing any six numbers right, that a pair will not sum to 12. For example, if I choose one from each of these pigeonholes, right, I wouldn't get a pair that sum to 12. But any additional one after that right, means that I have to have uh, at least one of them being a pair. And that's how I can finish them off. But but as we're choosing 6 plus 1 equals 7, by the pigeonhole principle, there must be at least one pair which sum to 12. Right? So I've kind of did a few things here. I've clearly laid out what my pigeonholes actually are. I've chosen that choosing 6 numbers would not be enough, because um, you could choose 1 from each hole. But as we're choosing 6 plus 1 equals 7, any additional one will mean by the pigeonhole principle, there must be at least one pair um, in this group which sums to 12. So that's how you can answer a question like that. We have to find what those pigeons, pigeonholes are, 
and then we have to write a statement which shows and proves that.